Welcome back to Pop Dissected. Today, we're going to be covering another highly requested topic from all of you. What happened with Britney Spears' ninth studio record, Glory? On previous videos overviewing eras by other artists that have underperformed, I've been using the word flop to label them. As I've said many times on my channel, and will say for the very last time, flop is a word thrown around usually without much reason or understanding of the word. I personally want to begin straying away from the negative connotations and inaccuracies the word flop brings. So moving forward on discussion videos overviewing certain records or eras, I'll simply just be asking, what happened or why did it underperform? I quickly want to thank everyone who's been liking and commenting on my videos as well as subscribing. This channel has grown so much in the last week alone and I'm so grateful for every single person who's made that happen. You are all amazing and I appreciate every single one of you. I also love continuing the discussion in the comments. I love debating with you all and I also appreciate when you comment new things I may have forgotten or left out. I always want to improve my videos, so I appreciate that so much. Now before we jump into the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more future content on all your favorite pop stars. Now in order for us to understand what happened with Glory, we're going to actually have to take a look at her preceding record, Britney Jean, released November 29th of 2013. Now if we remember in 2013, we had some huge releases going on, Art Pop, Prism, bangers, and then Beyonce, shortly after Britney Jean dropped. I mean, we'll never likely see such a pop music event like we did in 2013. It was incredible. However, it's safe to say, Britney had some unintended competition upon the release of her own record. All the aforementioned releases were huge for those respective artists, regardless of what you think of those records or if you like the artist or not. Britney Jean debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200 with 107,000 copies, becoming Britney's lowest charting and sales debut with a studio record. Her previous record, Femme Fatale, released in 2011, debuted with 276,000 copies and a number one on the Billboard 200. With all the hype around those aforementioned records, Britney Jean was the record that suffered in comparison. You have all these highly anticipated releases stacked up against a record by an artist who's been going for nearly two decades. With any artist who's been going for that long, it's not uncommon to see a drop in interest or sales. Britney herself also did very little promotion for this record as well. Promotion was crucial for this record, especially against all the huge releases from other female pop stars at the time. The first single off Britney Jean was Work Bitch, which debuted and peaked at 12 on the Hot 100 with 174,000 copies. The lead single off a record is arguably the most crucial one, as it will ultimately determine the audience's interest in the record it's promoting. Even with that, the music video and single did get praise from music critics, but maybe the single didn't connect with general audiences and potentially Britney's own fans. The single did not reach number one on any official charts, but did peak at number two on the UK Dance and US Dance Club songs charts. The second single, Perfume, debuted and peaked at 76 on the Hot 100. After that, not much promotion was ever given to the record, and instead, efforts were focused on Britney's Piece of Me, Las Vegas residency show. The show ran from December 27th, 2013, until December 31st of 2017. The show raked in $137.6 million and had 916,000 plus tickets sold, averaging an 86 attendance rate from reported numbers. Now, Britney's show had a set list of many of her hits. However, it may seem that because of the unexpected and underwhelming performance of Britney Jean, not as many people as possible or predicted were interested in seeing her live. On July 15th of 2016, Two days after ending the 14th leg of her Las Vegas residency, Britney released the first single off Glory, entitled Make Me, which later would get added to the setlist of her residency show. The track received generally positive views from music critics, with nothing notably negative said about the track. The track debuted and peaked at 17 on the Hot 100, with 96,000 copies. It also debuted at number 3 on the digital sales chart, the 20 million audience impression on airplay 
and 5.3 million streams. Following its debut, the track dropped to 52, eventually making its way to 67. However, following the music video's release, the track jumped from that position up to number 43. The track was performed at the 2016 MTV VMA Awards, sending it from a 58 position back to number 17, with 71,000 copies. However, some noted the performance of the single was overshadowed by performances from Beyonce, Ariana Grande, and Rihanna. Internationally, Make Me peaked at number 11 in France, her highest position since Work Bitch, and in the UK, peaked at number 43, and in Spain, peaked at number 80. The track also reached number one on the US Dance Club Songs chart. As we see, Make Me had a very wild time on the Hot 100, jumping up and down the chart. While this did show a general interest in the track despite it fluctuating, it became her lowest peaking first single off a record in 15 years. Her lowest peaking lead single was Slave For You, peaking at number 27 on the Hot 100, which by the way, it released in 2001. The second and final single off Glory was Slumber Party, released November 16th of 2016 while Britney was on her 16th leg of her Las Vegas residency. It debuted and peaked at 86 on the Hot 100. This became Britney's second lowest charting single, tying Overprotected off of Britney, but still above Radar off Circus, which charted at 88. Some critics commented the track was akin to her work on Blackout, while others saw the track's story as juvenile for someone of Britney's age. Slumber Party, however, did reach number one on the U.S. Dance Club Songs chart. It also reached number 10 in Greece, 13 in Hungary, and 27 in the Ukraine, and on the U.S. Mainstream Top 40 chart. Now let's get into Glory's actual release. The record was recorded from September 14, 2014, until June of 2016. Glory debuted and peaked at number three on the Billboard 200, with 111,000 units, becoming her second lowest debut following Britney Jean. It only spent one week in the top 10, and by its fifth week, it had dropped in 103, before dropping to 138 in its sixth week. After its seventh week, it fell off the Billboard 200. For a name like Britney Spears, this was seen as a huge underperformance by many. She's had six number one albums, two of which have been certified diamond in the United States for selling over 10 million copies. Despite Glory ending up on many top 10 lists of 2016, many began saying Britney's days of topping the Hot 100 and Billboard 200 had officially come to an end. Many began saying that she didn't have the star power to her name anymore, and that with so many new and more recognizable artists in the industry, Britney simply could not compete. Glory, however, did reach number one in the Czech Republic, Ireland, Italy, South Korea, and Taiwan while Pinky at number two in Brazil, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Despite all this, there are many positive factors that have been noted for this record's apparent underperformance. Many have stated Britney is focusing much more time on her children, and that's coming first for her rather than her music, and I think that's very admirable. Others have stated her Las Vegas residency is already providing her a steady income, so the efforts to massively promote her records are not entirely needed. However, in terms of negative factors, some have stated that her label RCA simply doesn't care and they aren't working to promote her more. On top of that, some cited following her 2009 mental health issues, people haven't been interested in Britney. During that time, a lot of attention was given to Britney in the news and the media. Now, what I'm about to say is not my personal opinion, but merely speculation. It could be possible some people don't exactly care for Britney right now because she wasn't going through the same struggles she was going through during that time. When someone struggles, it becomes front page news and many people become invested in what's happening with them. When someone is healthy and seemingly living their best life, there is no front page news anymore. That very well may unfortunately turn people off. Now, in my personal opinion, I think that we as a society tend to be more invested in someone when they're personally struggling. We want to know all the juicy details and the gossip of what's going on in that person's life. But I think once we know someone as well, we stop caring about them. 
And of course, this is very much a generalization, as the situation varies from person to person. I just think it's an issue with society, to be honest. We love to be involved in drama, and once everything is fine, we kind of disengage in a way. Another possible reason for Glory's seeming underperformance may also be the fact that Britney has been in the industry for nearly 17 years at the time of the record's release. Many new popular artists emerged and captivated people. Whether we like it or not, the industry is a competition. Whoever is topping the charts and producing the most money will be the most recognized usually. Britney was not topping the charts at this time, thus her public engagement generally decreased. Of course, that doesn't mean her loyal fans weren't following her. I absolutely admire and respect Britney, but I'm not a huge fan of hers, so I'm not sure how her fans personally felt about Glory, Britney Jean, or any of her single choices. So for any Britney stans who are watching, what are your personal opinions on Britney Jean, Glory, and their single choices? I'd love to discuss them with you in the comments. So through it all, what happened with Glory? Now this will take into account an industry perspective, not Britney personally. First and foremost, Britney was coming off the heels of a record that didn't live up to many's expectations, so it's no surprise the follow-up didn't give her a huge rebound. Despite receiving generally more promotion than its predecessor, it was still lacking. The record only had two singles, so it didn't have any other songs to further promote the record. During this era, Britney was also performing at her Las Vegas residency show, which surely lended her very little time to go out and extensively promote Glory. However, in between her residency, Britney embarked on an 11-date concert in Asia entitled Britney Live in Concert. Following this, from July 12, 2018 until October 21st of 2018, Britney embarked on the Piece of Me tour. It spanned three legs and 31 shows, raking in a reported $54.3 million. So with all of this, what's next for Britney? Well, she had a second Las Vegas residency show planned, entitled Britney Domination, which had 32 scheduled shows. However, it was put on hold in January of 2019, Britney citing her father's health as the reason. With that, all of Britney's professional commitments have been put on hiatus, and as of now, there's no word if the residency will proceed. We also know this year, there have been many things going on with Britney personally, such as the hashtag Free Britney movement. I won't detail that in this video, but we'll leave links in the description if you'd like to read more on that. Despite all these things, we know Britney Spears is an icon, and one of the most impactful female pop stars of all time. While she may have seen a commercial decline this decade, she very much has proven herself as an artist and as a performer. All I can say is, with everything going on in her life, I hope 2020 brings Britney Spears happiness, peace, and love from within her family and from her fans as well. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Comment down below what you think of Britney's glory era and what you would hope to see in her next studio record. Once more, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more future content on all your favorite pop stars.